and over here a little bit of other, we're here at Leicester Square in the screening of Bobby, which is directed by um, Emilio Estevez. We just arrived now, we're just waiting for the start and hopefully we'll manage to get some interviews. The atmosphere is great, it's absolutely packed and we've managed to see stars such as Sharon Stone, Christian Slater, Eric Bauma, the director um, Emilio Estevez and we managed to have an interview with one of the co-stars as well. How was the set like? Did it feel, since you were doing a historical event, did it feel authentic and real? What, what was it like? Yeah, I mean, well, anytime you're doing like a period, well, anytime you're doing a period piece or, you know, when it's costumes or from another time or whatever, it's always kind of trippy because, you know, you're walking around, you have all these extras walking around, full on hair and makeup, and it just feels like you're like, wow. And then when we shot in the hotel, it just felt like, wow. I'm like, where am I? What, what year is this? I guess that was great, too, because, you know, you didn't really have to stretch too much acting or whatever, but it was great. We're watching the breaking and entering, and we've just seen co-stars such as Jude Law, one from the office, and director um, Anthony Minghella, which I have just managed to speak to him just for a very short time, but at least I managed to. So London is a wonderful city, and we're lucky to live here. I'm like him, I'm always trying to do the right thing. I don't often do the right thing, but I'm trying to do the right thing and trying to learn lessons in, in life. And, and, and so those, those are maybe similarities. I'm not as tidy as Will. He lives a very tidy life. A dream is to keep doing whatever I want to do, you know. The trouble is that people try and, as soon as you think, well, I'll do comedy and then I'll do straight, people think that there's a problem with that. It's like it's rocket science or something. It's very simple. If you're an actor, you act. I'm from South Korea. South Korea. And what do you think of the London Film Festival? Uh, it's really nice, but it's really hard to take a picture. Come on, please. 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 Here at Leicester Square for the premiere of Fast Food Nation, directed by Richard Linkley, Linklat. How does it feel in London? Oh, glad, glad to be back. I, w I was at the London Film Festival 15 years ago with the film, so I'm, I'm happy to be back. I've been back to London a lot since, but just not at the, at the film festival. Tell us a little bit about your character, the role that you play in this movie. Well, I play Amber and I work at a fast food restaurant. And um, as you can probably tell from the picture, <laughs> I get to wear the ugly uniform. And um, that was a whole lot of fun. But, I, you know, through the course of the movie, she goes on a little journey and doesn't end up working at the restaurant anymore and becomes more of an activist. What did you think of the film? Oh, it's a third time I've seen it, and I like it more each time. So, yeah. Hello, good evening. How are you tonight? Very good. How are you tonight? Hello everyone, we're here at the View Cinema of the West End, ready to, waiting for Tim Barton to arrive for his premiere for the film Nightmare Before Christmas in 3D. And here next to me is Mo, who helped us out from the press. Hi. Tell us a little bit about this event. Well, it's a re-release of the Nightmare Before Christmas. Obviously it's all been done up in 3D now. I believe it's still stop motion, um, but it's going to be more in the vein of Corpse Bride as opposed to the original kind of plasticine stop motion that it was before. Hello, Mom! <laughs> no, let me have him. I like Tim Burton very much. My favourite film he did is Beetlejuice because there is a funny man who molests women. <laughs> OK, well, thank you very much for that. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hello, nice to meet you. How does it feel after 13 years to have this classic onto the cinema again? Well, it's great because this process really lends itself to the way the film was originally made. So there's something about this movie in 3D that just shows off the artist's work so much clearer and so much more the way it was intended to be. For all those uh, film students who are eager to go into the film industry, what advice would you give to them? Well, it's a good time because there's a lot in terms of animation that goes on. You know, when I first started as an animator, there was not much going on. And now, you know, there's so much in terms of computer animation or uh, even stop motion or any kinds of special effects, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of good, you know, it's a good time to, to, to be doing that sort of thing. Apart from the fact that it's in 3D, have you added any other changes or anything? Or is it still the classical? Just it. It's just, it's just in 3D. So, you know, didn't want to tamper with it. That's why I never made any sequels or anything. Just wanted it to be pure. And this process actually accentuates the pureness of it, so I'm happy. Thank you so much. Your work is wonderful and best of luck for the rest. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.
fellow students, we're here at Leicester Square for the last premiere of the London Film Festival, which is Babel, directed by Alejandro González Niu, and as well as co-stars such as Gael García Bernal and Kukichu. The other movies that you've done, how does this one di differentiate from them? And are you were you trying to anchor into more Hollywood style or remain the whole Mexican style into it like the other ones? Well, I think I have been feeling the same since Amores Perros, you know, fortunately having, having the same uh, independence, the same, the same freedom and the same, the same control over the whole process. And it's just the scale and sometimes budget change depending on the circumstances of the needs of the, of the films. Never, never any money is enough, but, uh, but I feel the same independent filmmaker doing what I wanted to do and that's very fortunate. I feel a privileged filmmaker, you know. How was working with Alejandro one more time? It was really nice to work with him. Uh, it was a uh, it was our first experience together, doing a film, and now it's our um, second. And uh, and I th I hope that I have the th opportunity to work with him for a third time now. How much work did she had to put into in playing such a complicated role as the one of somebody being deaf? <laughs> But first of all, the one year she has to keep on doing auditioning. So that uh, I'm all the time, you know, uh, associate with that the deaf people, actually deaf people. And I went to that uh, school for deaf people. And also I made a friend and I talk with them. So that I'm always, you know, associate with them. To manage to get a couple of interviews. So hopefully right now in a few seconds. We're gonna Directed by Richard Linklater. Linklater! <laughs> We're ready to, uh, to see the premiere for Fast Food Nation. Directed by <laughs> Richard Linklater. <laughs> 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 we are at the London Film Festival. Exclusive story for you coming in right now. We've just seen the lady from the Westminster University Harrow Campus Library walk out of the pictures. Somebody from the library was here, we just seen her, we didn't, we tried to get her but we couldn't, she just walked off. <gasps> Looks like she had a smile on her face, didn't she? She did indeed. And I'm afraid that is the last premiere, the last gala we're going to be here, it's going to be sad, isn't it? <sighs> <sighs> Bye! Bye! We've had a great time! <laughs>